Hi. Whoever just joined. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, everybody. Well, I suppose morning is about to be gone from us. Um, I wonder if my notifications aren't going out again. We're down here in Atlanta at the salon. And uh, my daughter is a hairstylist downtown Atlanta. Hey, Michelle. Um, so we're just wasting time in, well, I'm wasting time in the Buckhead area of Atlanta. So it's where, um, hey, Tanya, happy birthday. I don't think my sister will be getting on, but it's her birthday today, too. Um, hey, Jana. Thanks for the salt scope again from last night. That was pretty cool. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Both of you have 1010 in your email addresses, so that's kind of cool. And you have a long passage for today. Good morning. And for anybody following along, we're, uh, my name is Michelle Wolf. We talk about A Course in Miracles every day and how um, to make it practical in your daily life, like when you're going through problems, the things to tell yourself, stuff to make it useful. Hi, Linda. And today is, good morning, in the workbook, section two, lesson 283, verse one, and it's pretty much the whole verse, so I didn't bring the big book all the way down here with me. We're in the city, and uh, we'll probably mess around in the city for a while before going back to our um, cabin. And then tomorrow we'll be with the twins, and tomorrow afternoon we will do the Reiki class in the afternoon. Uh, I've got to go home and dig out the materials for that. And I think I'll have my daughter be our our surrogate. So we talked last night about how we're going to do that. Is uh, I'm going to talk to you, tell you what it's about, set everybody up. Oh, look, what awesome emojis for the birthday thing. That's cool. Set everybody up, set our intention that you'll receive what I'm doing with uh, my daughter. So I'm going to give her level one reinitiation. She's already attuned. But I'll do it again with the intention that as I'm going through her body, you'll be having that experience in yours as well. So we're going to experiment that way and see what happens. And it'd be awesome if you guys can... Um, make some notes about how you feel before and how you feel after. Um, and as you're using Reiki on yourself every day, preferably even for a few minutes, it'll be interesting to see if that, um, uh, not taught them, but yes, with them, it'll be tomorrow afternoon. We're aiming for between three and 5 PM Eastern. Um, I can't nail it down entirely because things can change, but that's the time frame we're aiming for. And Michelle, um, children and animals especially respond really well to Reiki because they have less limitations for receiving. So adults can kind of talk themselves out of it unless they don't know their, uh, when it's coming to them. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, tomorrow afternoon. Kyle pulled that energy work card and it said you would benefit from energy work like Reiki. Absolutely. It's very soothing. Uh, it's very, it's a very um, nurturing, kind of comforting, non-stimulating energy. Like some energies, um, I'm going to say like Kofutu and things like that are kind of a activating energy. And Reiki is more of a let's relax and let our bodies heal. So, yeah, definitely. And, Af Michelle, if you watch it, you can practice it with him and see what happens. You can't hurt him. So, so for our Course in Miracles for today, October 10th. And, Catherine, if you catch this replay, happy birthday to you, too. Um, sitting in my car in the salon, people are like, we're in, the like, the richest part of Atlanta. And they're like, what is that crazy person doing in her car? But homeless people do it, so... I guess I can sit in my car and talk to myself, right? <laughs> okay, October 10th. It's a long one. Father, I made an image of myself. And it is called, 
It is this I call the Son of God. Yet is creation as it always was. <laughs> yes, they are. For your creation is unchangeable. So I'm going to read through this whole thing and then I'm going to come back and kind of translate it. So let me not worship idols. I am he my father loves. My holiness remains the light of heaven and the love of God. Is not what is beloved of you secure? Is not the light of heaven infinite? Is not your son my true identity? When you created everything that is. So I used to have this circular argument with people when I was a little kid. Like, if God created everything that is, then how can we exclude anyone? Or how can we say that some people... Because in the fundamentalist church I was raised in as a small kid, the belief was, and still is, I guess, that if you, unless you belong to that particular church, you're doomed. Like, there's nothing you can do. You're, there's, you're just helpless against the gates of hell because if you are not in that church this is my kid understanding of it too um, then you're not going to make it you're just left on your own so um, I used to argue a lot as a kid I also got into weird circular arguments about if God made everything who made God like I went round and round with that in my head when I was like seven but anyway, it didn't make sense to me. And that's kind of what this is saying. It's like, if you accept that source is everything in everything and everything is of that material, then to exclude anything creates your hell. <laughs> right? Yeah. The non-believer thing. Um... In studying religions for me, the bottom line of, and philosophies, the bottom line of all of them is pretty consistently the same throughout the world and throughout time. So I don't know if we just left ourselves clues or if there's just always been certain people who could bring that reminder information to us or what happened, but throughout time it's pretty much the same. I don't, I can't explain it because that's like meaning of life stuff and you have to be stoned or a little bit crazy to try and figure that stuff out. And I might be a little bit crazy, but I'm definitely not stoned. So, uh, so creation is unchangeable. And when it says, let me not worship idols, <laughs> right? You have to be good and drunk to think about those cosmic issues because otherwise you just can't wrap your head around them. Um, idols can be anything that takes us away from our connection to source. It's anything outside of ourselves that we're seeking to fill that ache in our gut or that emptiness in our chest that makes us restless and makes us go looking for other things to fill it with. It makes us obsess on other people. It makes us obsess on um, substances, and that can be... You know, it makes us obsess on binge watching Netflix for a whole weekend, anything to it's it's kind of like it's just misguided. You know, it's our childlike clumsy attempts to fill what can't be filled except by some kind of connection to source and whatever you call it, that deep, satisfying contentment only consistently comes from there in my experience. When I was studying AA models in school for a research project, and when I was taking the teenagers to AA and NA meetings several times a week, they said consistently that you can come in and you can work the 12 steps, but until you find some connection to whatever you want to call your higher power, your victory is kind of hollow. It doesn't have the depth and the richness. Um... So my holiness remains the light of heaven and the love of God. And it's secure as far as we let it be secure. It's secure. It's there for us all the time. And being your, yeah, 
yeah, because we're not, you're not satisfying that ache that we're born with. Um, so our true identity is children of source. It is the outgrowth of source expressing itself in different forms. And it's another one of those can't have it both ways things. If we believe that everything is created out of the same thing, that means all of us are created out of the same thing too. And the only risk um, separation is in our own head. Um, so the, the daily practice that I'm always harping on about and the benefit of that is when you do wake up in a bad mood, you have something to shift you before you get out into the world too far. And even when you get out into the world too far and things happen, you're able to turn it around fairly quickly if you're practiced at it. A lot of people, I feel like, give up on daily practices and they don't give them enough time. I looked it up and we've been doing this since August 26th. So, what is that? Six or seven weeks every single day. Um, that's pretty good. So I catch myself pretty quickly these days because I started this for myself, you know, in January. But like today, uh, my mom and I left Ella J and it's an hour and a half down here to Atlanta. And we stopped at Starbucks and we got, uh, we both got coffee, but I got coffee with steamed milk in it. Here's the after effects of what happened. <clears throat> so it was overheated, like to the point of, I don't even know, like, uh, beverage from hell kind of hot and the lid popped off. Like it was so hot. The cup was collapsing. You can see it was kind of collapsing there. Yeah, it's yeah, me too. So it spilled. This is my favorite blouse. This is actually a tunic that comes down to like the middle of my thighs and I have black like palazzo pants under it. So it doesn't show anything. So I, I literally spilled like eight ounces of coffee on me, but it was scalding hot, like so hot. My fingers hurt and my skin hurt for a long time. And then my mom was um, trying to put the lid back on and it squeezed. And so she ended up doused in scalding, boiling hot coffee. Oh, me too. I'm so glad. I'm like, I have to do my scope. When can I do my scope? Does the salon have Wi-Fi? Because <laughs> she's like, yes, the salon has Wi-Fi. So I'm sitting right in front of the salon doing this. <laughs> but um, I couldn't miss it. Um, so, and I, you know, the cat woke me up and we ate Mexican food. So I had heartburn. Like, so it was a little bit of a rough start to the morning. And then the coffee thing happened, and that was right when we left. And, of course, there's no time to turn around and go back. And um, so I was thinking about that because I was pissed. And I started to call. Yeah, you know, I actually do. Oh, Rhonda, that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys look forward to this. I, I certainly do. Um, I think I do have some lavender. And if I don't, my mom does. And my daughter uses Young Living Oils, of course. So... Um, I was pretty mad when that happened. And, um, so even the coffee that was left was kind of undrinkable because she had heated it to the point that the milk, you know how scalded milk smells pretty horrible. So, and I need, and I needed the coffee. So <laughs> I was already in a bad mood. <laughs> so I thought about you all. And I thought about what we do every morning. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to make that phone call. Because I was going to call and bitch at the Starbucks. And be like, you know, the stuff you say when you're mad. Like, oh my God. It was overheated. Please tell her, don't overheat the milk to that degree. And, and all of that. And um, so I was like, okay, you know, we're not going to do that. The shit happens. And... I'm certain that she didn't stand there at the machine and say, you know what, I'm going to heat this milk like devil hot. <laughs> you know, nobody does that crap on purpose. Okay. Um, I think there's also Perry problems, Tanya. I had a lot of trouble with my internet last night too. And um, the signal strength just hasn't been very good. Yes, enjoy your birthday. 
So anyway, um, the point of the daily practice, the point of keeping this stuff fresh in your mind throughout the day is to get so practiced at it that when shit like that happens, it doesn't ruin your whole day. And we talked about that, you know, my mom and I, like, because she was pissed off too. Um, I talked to myself. I reminded myself that the woman who made the coffee did not do that on purpose. That she really probably put the milk under the thing, the steamer thing, and turned around and did something else, and it just got way too damn hot. So I feel pretty confident that she didn't overheat that milk on purpose. So when she put the lid on it, because it was so hot, it melted the cup is what happened. It was just so blistering hot. So I don't think she did it on purpose. So if you know that someone didn't do something on purpose to harm you, it's hard to stay mad at them. Now I might call and say, I won't. But if I, if it was important to me to call, I could call and say, Hey, just want to let you know this happened remind your barista to pay attention when the milk is on the steamer because my mom's coffee wasn't like that so it was definitely when she heated the milk and then I reminded myself that I'm I'm fine I'm a little short on sleep but my mom is here and we're coming to see my daughter I'm next up to get my hair done and who doesn't enjoy that you know getting your hair done is really nice and um, my mom's got us it's my mom's birthday on October 16th. So my daughter is cutting her hair right now, but she's also going to surprise her with a facial and a manicure when she's done. So yes, hashtag keep the milk cool. No scalding hot milk, please. But anyway, I could have just raged on that for a while. And, um, I just didn't, we just have to remind ourselves that people are doing the best they can. Tip, Generally speaking, people don't set out to hurt us. It is hard to think about criminals and terrorists, terrorists as being one with us. Birthdays everywhere, yeah. Um, you know, rage against the barista. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Um, the terrorists and the criminals and stuff, you know what helped me? When I was a kid, our family's German and Irish. And so when I was a kid, my grandfather still spoke, he spoke German and Hungarian because his parents were German and Hungarian. Well, in Texas, there's a pretty strong German population. And um, I remember first finding out, you know, when you first read Diary of Anne Frank and it's like so horrifying. And then I read books by Eli Weissel and um, I can't remember the name of it, but it, you know, those books are impactful when you're like a young teenager and you start understanding the Holocaust. And then, so then the next step backwards is, oh my God, that's, you know, our family's German. We weren't in Germany at the time, but then you're like, oh, that's like a cultural thing I share. If I like claim my Germanic heritage, then it comes with this Nazi package. And it was really horrifying to me. And my mom talk to me a lot about it and I don't know if she remembers this or not but she talked about how they thought night yeah that's a powerful book they thought they were doing the right thing so even from their screwed up perspective in their own heads that's Victor Frankl and that's a book that's excellent for reading Mansford uh, there's a quote in the very end of that book Michelle from Victor Frankl from that book, Man's Search for, um, yeah, read that book. It's excellent. Um, the power of control we have even under horrific circumstances. But the terrorists think they're doing the right thing. In their minds, they're right. They are on the side of right. And they do these vicious things in their heads for a larger purpose. So even they're not because they hurt. If you have people causing pain, they're people who are in pain, people who are blind and lost. You can't be connected to true source. Now they claim religious connection or spiritual connection, um, but you can't be connected to true source and hurt people on purpose. Yeah, they think they are doing what is just and right and proper 
They think they're saving the world. So in their minds, they're not off kilter. There is a lot of mean people out there, but there's also a lot of nice people out there. Um, I have to believe for my own sanity that there's more people who would stop and save a dog on the side of the road than wouldn't. And, um, I could be wrong, but I'll, I will lose my mind if I think that the balance of mean people versus nice people is higher. And I think we see it. I think the nice people are quiet and you don't see them a lot except in times of tragedy because look what happens when something tragic happens. More people run toward the danger than away. There's people that run toward, there's people that run away, but I feel like in general, in national tragedy, yeah, I feel like in general, during tragedy and during times of hardship, people who don't even like each other and may even hate each other will, when it counts, pull together and do something positive. I just have to believe that um, because I don't have any control over it. All I can do is continue to be that person that stops for the dog or stops to help somebody get in the store or helps our neighbor when he needs help or whatever. Um, we, we were talking last night actually about the por importance of community. When you're in a large urban area, you lose that. But where we are, we kind of have to depend e on each other. Where there, There's only Heath and I. There's a lot of good people that are quiet and they just, you just don't really see them till they're needed and then they're all over the place. Um, Heath and I live in our valley full time and an older man lives up the road from us and he's out there full time and that's it. Everyone else is out on the weekends. Uh, some people I have never seen and I've lived there for six months now, maybe five months. I've never seen them. They're just, it's a family cabin and there's nobody for miles. So the three of us kind of have to maintain a good relationship with each other. And sometimes the old man is a little cranky and he's kind of a busybody. Um, he's also very wise and he drives Heath crazy because Heath hates organized religion and he can get a little preachy sometimes. And I believe that. I do believe we'll see more good coming because look how many people are on Periscope all day practicing spiritual principles and reaching for the higher good in themselves. We can all reach a higher levels more. We can all, I won't say higher. I'll say as yourself, love your neighbor as yourself, Get, love yourself most important and then go because if you love yourself, it will naturally spill over to your neighbor. Um, yeah. I also think it's the filters that we put on our eyes kind of dictate who lights up for us in our environment that day. If I'm in a good mood and I'm chatty and smiling at people and, you know, I'm going to connect with more people. Before it was only restricted to my little community and now the entire world has opened up to you. Yes. Um, Periscope has connected us in a really unique way. And if we can do this, we can create something even better. Like I love Blab. I don't have the bandwidth for it at home. I can't, I can get on there, but I can't, uh, I can't like get in the seat and talk to people. So I'd love for us to be able to do that. But I just don't have the internet access at the moment. But that's going to continue to be refined. Uh, and we're going to continue to connect. I said this a long, long time ago when we first started. It feels like a long time ago. It really wasn't. But I do believe that Periscope and the internet and Blab and Twitter and Facebook are our desperate attempts to recreate in re intangible reality what we know is true in our souls you don't have a computer and can't log in from android yeah yeah from android you can't use the blab app 
and what I hear is not a very good app yet anyway so we seeing more good come out because of a shift in ourselves yeah we're, we're gonna more people are looking to fill that restlessness more people are looking to fill the ache in the appropriate place with connection to source with connection to all that is in us. But we're going to continue to try to find ways to connect with each other in tangible reality ways in the way that we know we're connected on other levels. We know it. And we try to recreate it in our little clumsy ways. We do the best we can, right? We want so desperately to connect to each other in the way that we know is true. The true connection. Do you ever notice that when the screen freezes up, it always catches you at the worst possible moment and you look like you're about to have a seizure? <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, I gotta go in. It's hot out here. <laughs> People are tired of all the crapola we've been in inundated with the past 30 years or so. Yeah, we're starving. We're spiritually starving. Yeah, it's always like... <laughs> And then it unfreezes and you're like, awesome. That's great. Thanks, Periscope. <laughs> so, yeah. We are starving to death. And we've been starving for a very long time. See, it just did it again. <laughs> and we're tired of being hungry, I think. So we're reaching for the actual food in life now. The spiritual food that's what we've needed all along. <laughs> so uh okay so i'm gonna wrap up and go indoors and cool off no it's hot it's still hot here it'll stay hot here till november um it's gonna be in the oh let's see i think they said mid 70s low 80s today yeah time to live I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't had my hair done and I haven't had her cut my hair in quite a while. So, um, I'll see you in the morning and then, um, see you in the afternoon for some experimental Reiki and we'll see how it goes. We'll be trendsetters, right? We can set our own trend. You're welcome. Have a nice day. 90? Ugh. <laughs> okay. So humid. Yeah, it's so humid. You have to grow gills here. Probably there too. 60s, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, I'm used to it being a little colder because we've been living in Colorado for 25 years. So I'm a little like, isn't it supposed to be cold yet? And then I was like, oh God, yeah, we're back in the south. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful day. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow and think about translating this stuff when something crappy happens today if it does let's say it won't but if it does fall back on this daily practice that you do and let it turn you around i will i will she had so much fun talking to you guys yesterday at the rock shop so much fun she loved it yeah george is hot well you're in florida it's even hotter right giant bugs yeah love to you too I'll see you. I'll see you in the morning. We'll talk. We'll talk again. Okay. Bye.